All right, live from the investment conference, the fourth South Africa investment conference here at the Santon Convention Center. Uh, we are speaking to the ESCOM CEO, Andre Dureta. It's great to have you with us, Mr. Dureta. Um, however, you're, you're in this environment talking about investment, uh, the, the challenges to investment in South Africa. Do you feel a little bit like ESCOM is the, the Grinch uh, that, that stole investment, that, that's part of the problem? Uh, the lack of energy security in South Africa is definitely a constraint to investment and economic growth. We know that. But ironically, this also presents a fantastic opportunity. Mr. Dureta, can you hold the mic okay. right close? Uh, right. Let's start again. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so okay. you're not the Grinch that stole investment. <laughs> All right. Um, we, we know that uh, the lack of energy security in South Africa is a constraint on economic growth and on investment. So we are definitely part of the problem. But we also think that we can be a major part of the solution to attracting new investment. There are a number of multinational companies, very large companies, who have expressed an interest to come and invest in South Africa in storage, in generation capacity, to participate in the just energy transition. And my presence here at this conference really is to try and engage with those investors to persuade them to be part of the solution to alleviate the generation capacity crunch. And can you in all good conscience say, listen, things are going to get better? Yes, because we have a plan. We think it's a good plan. We are unbundling our uh, transmission company and that should be fully operationalized by September of, that, of, of this year. Once that is done, investors will be able to bid into the power pool and know that they will not be prejudiced relative to ESCOM generation. So from an investment security perspective, that is a huge uh, plus to, to uh, entice investors to come and help us solve our generation problems. I think to lay people, uh, and myself, uh, to be honest, this whole unbundling is, is a little bit obscure. We, we don't understand the details. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're opening up generation. Basically, you're opening up the grid to a lot of electricity providers. So it's not only ESCOM. Uh, some have complained, you know, are we privatizing? Uh, what, what's going on? Uh, just explain why we always talk about this as, as crucial and beneficial. South Africa instantaneously needs between four to 6,000 megawatts of capacity to address load shedding comprehensively. And you as ESCOM can't provide that, and we don't, in a nutshell? We, we don't have that capacity available right now. Now the DMRE are running a number of bid windows to uh, get that capacity onto the grid. We think that there is room for significantly more. But if you look longer term into the future, ESCOM is going to retire about 22 gigawatts of coal-fired capacity by 2035. That means that we have to replace that with around about uh, 50 gigawatts of predominantly renewable energy as we also have to decarbonize. Now, ironically, the world is queuing up to partner with ESCOM because ESCOM has such a carbon intensive generation profile. And by retiring our coal-fired power stations, we're able to access concessional financing to pay for uh, the expansion of the grid, to uh, fund the strengthening of our distribution, but also to um, participate modestly in some new generation capacity. Can, can we also de demystify this? So basically we get credits, uh, carbon credits that you can sell on, something like that. No, it's really loans, but on, on very, very favorable terms. We're talking about payment holidays for up to eight years, uh, interest rates that are close to zero. So really very concessional terms. And the quid pro quo that we put on the table is to decarbonize, which we need to do in any event as part of our uh, commitment to the Paris Agreement. You, you said that there's room for so much more, and I think some people don't understand, I mean, why are there even upper limits on to what uh, people can feed into the grid now Now at 100 megawatts, um, and and it's been said things are slow. Do you go and talk to ministers about this, and, and so, uh, why should there even be limits? We were uh, one of the first advocates uh, to lift the limit on self or embedded generation from uh, 
15 megawatts to 100 megawatts. Uh, and that therefore I think demonstrates that ESCOM doesn't want to hang on to its monopolistic position. We, we are in a, in, a, in a strange way arguing against our own position as the incumbent monopolist. Yeah. We, we want to be an enabler of solving the energy crisis. Because frankly, I don't much like appearing on national television every time that there's load shedding. Yeah. Uh, we need to solve this crisis. And, and the only way in which we can solve the crisis is to attract investors to come and put that capacity on the grid and to remove as many regulatory and policy obstacles as we can. And I think government is seized with this matter and we have seen some significant progress over the last number of months with uh, the electricity regulation amendment bill uh, being being put out for public comment. So I think we, we, we are making a lot of good progress in the right direction. Yeah. Mr. Director, when you came in, uh, I remember there was optimism and you were asked when would the load shedding end. So after a few months, it seemed like you were getting on top of that and you didn't give fixed time limits. Uh, I can't put words in your mouth and I can't remember exactly what you said. But I remember there were coming months, uh, a time frame when you said it's likely to get better. Then we've seen uh, just terrible load shedding. Was it, has it been, well, well surely it's been much worse than you expected. And, and the question is not about uh, competence, I, th I think it's about trust, uh, whether you know what's going on. Uh, because you gave the, the wrong signals and, and people are starting to ask, do you know what's happening in this big beast called ESCOM? Do you understand now what went wrong with Madupi and Kosile and, and how to start fixing the problem? So we need three things to address load shedding. We need skills, and we don't have enough skills. Uh, we need we need more skills, and we are addressing that. We need time, uh, and I fully understand that the nation is impatient and that they uh, want us to address this like two years ago and not, not keep on promising. So we understand the urgency, and we need money. And the lack of money and funds has been one of the largest constraints on enabling us to continue to carry out our maintenance programs. Um, the, the plans that we had to carry out the maintenance programs were, were really hamstrung by a lack of adequate skills internally as well as the timely release of funds to enable us to, to buy spares, to appoint contractors and so forth. So um, is it disappointing? Yes. Uh, but I do think that we've got a very good handle on what is wrong. Uh, the challenge is we, we need the space to fix it. And running our existing plants harder and harder just is like running an old tired broken car with a rev counter in the red all the time. W were you surprised at the extent of the problem? Did you think actually we could get out of this and, and then things got worse? Were you very disappointed? Uh, the, the neglect that I found was, was worse than I had thought, yes. Okay. But right now you're saying you personally feel like you're on top of this beast called ESCOM. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big beast uh, and I think we, we are working incredibly hard uh, and it's not me, it's, it's, it's the entire ESCOM executive management team that are really trying their utmost. Uh, people put in an extraordinary effort. And, and how do you feel when people say you should go? You, you are unfortunately the face of load shedding in South Africa. If uh, uh, the president and the, and, the, and the minister decide that it's time for me to go, then I'll go. Uh, but I think many of those who call for my resignation or sacking are people with, with vested interests, uh, to be honest. And I think that there are people who, who would like to see a return to uh, an instable uh, ESCO where uh, the doors and the coffers were wide open. My final question to you, you said you need space to fix this problem and I know you are always asked this, uh, but when could there be an end to load shedding? Where is the silver lining uh, at, at the end of the cloud? Give us that four to 6,000 megawatts of capacity and we will see an end to load shedding. And that is why we've been advocating, I've been advocating uh, for this for the past yeah. two years. And, and that would put the ball in the court of government? We cannot procure our own electricity. 
that is a job done by the IPP office that's, that reports to the DMRE. We are the designated buyer, but we don't procure electricity. So that's that's where the responsibility lies. All right. Thank you so much for your time uh, tonight. Uh, that was the ESCOM CEO, Andre Dureta. We're coming to you from the Sanson Convention Center, South Africa Investment Conference 2022. That's my colleague there, Francis Hurd. In conversation with Eskom CEO, Andre Dereta, we apologize for the sound um, quality in that particular interview.